Hello and welcome, my name is Peter Waters, uh, G3OJV, welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm going to talk about uh, vertical antennas on this uh, episode. Now, vertical antennas uh, I've covered uh, in several videos, but I've been doodling on a notepad recently, as you do, and uh, came up with an idea for a very simple dual band vertical antenna. Um, I decided that I'd configure it for 20 and 40 metres. Now, those two bands at the moment are pretty good bands to choose if you're an HF operator. 20 metres because it carries some DX uh, from time to time. You can certainly work around Europe uh, most times of the day. Uh, sometimes it extends into the evening, but uh, currently with the sunspot cycle being at a very low <laughs> point indeed, I think we're almost at the minimum now. Um, the conditions aren't always as uh, predictable as uh, you might expect. 40 metres, of course, is a band that carries a lot of traffic. It's a very popular band and it's open, uh, I think, all night. I mean, I, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning to listen on 40 metres, but uh, I've no reason to doubt that there is some activity on that band. So if you suffer with insomnia, perhaps 40 metres is uh, the band for you. <laughs> Now this antenna is quite simple. All you need is wire, um, a means of supporting it, and a uh, little plastic tube, plastic form or something, but a plastic pipe or something like that. Let me tell you about it. Basically, in order to operate on two bands, um, you need to have some sort of trap arrangement if you're going to operate on a uh, uh, with a single length of wire, um, particularly if you're going to operate on 20 and 40 where um, the bands are related harmonically um, because on 20 metres a 16 foot length of wire, sorry, feet, a 5 metre length of wire has got a low impedance. Um, clearly it won't work on 40 metres. On 40 metres you have a 10 metre length of wire which is fine for 40 metres but uh, you can't feed it on 20 metres because the end is a high impedance, so you need some sort of trap arrangement. Now, something I've exper well, experimented, or something I've used on and off ever since I was first licensed is a trap system, and it's called a choke trap. Basically, instead of having um, an inductor and a capacitor as a tuned circuit to act as a trap as you would normally have, you just have an inductor, and this inductance acts as a choke. So basically what you do is you have your 20 meter element. On the top of the element, you put this choke. And then above the choke, you put a short element. So what actually happens is this coil acts as a choke on 20 meters, but it doesn't choke 40 meters. So the coil becomes a loading coil on 40 metres, quite a clever arrangement. But to make it work, you really need to have this harmonic relationship. Uh, one band needs to be twice or half the other band in frequency. So um, 20 and 40 is, is, a, is a good combination. There's nothing special about this coil. It can be wound on any insulated material, plastic, bit of wood, whatever. Um, and the actual value of this uh, coil is not super critical. Clearly it has to have enough inductance to act as a choke, um, but beyond that it's not that critical. So it's quite a flexible system. Now, on paper it tells me that they should work, and in my head I think, well, of course it's going to work. You know, why shouldn't it work? But of course, one thing I've learned with antennas is that the only way to make sure an antenna works is to make it. Yeah, you can do modelling and so forth, but making the antenna is the real test. Does it or doesn't it work? So, I set about making one. Uh, right, here's some uh, sample calls. This is a coil, this is a coil that I wound for a different project, 
but I tend to use these uh, pipe joiners um, that I get from B&Q um, but I think you can get them from other hardware stores I'm sure you can uh, the reason I like them is because they're nicely machined at the ends uh, the downside is that they're very often not long enough um, for lower frequencies but um, uh, that's uh, what I uh, tend to use um, and that's what I've used for this project although I've used thinner wire so I can get the 25 turns onto the uh, coil former I tend to use PVC covered wire because it looks neater and because I've got a lot of it um, but you can use enamel copper wire it doesn't really really matter um, this is a, an example of a uh, there we are, I can see the coil former there I've drilled for a project put the wire through there and oh by the way I use a strip of um, uh, glue there from a glue gun glue guns are very cheap you can get them from the uh, from game from B and Q about uh, ten or twelve pounds factory shop etc etc and they're, they're well worth having because uh, it sort of certainly holds the turns in place there's another example here of another coil this is a commercially made coil which actually is used um, for adding 80 meters to an antenna um, and this one of course is impregnated and I suspect that's enamel copper wire under there I don't know but anyway uh, it's not critical you can make your coils uh, from whatever tubing you've got provided it's non-conductive of course plastic uh, is uh, is ideal easy to cut and so forth now I'm going to put up on the screen here a sketch drawing of the antenna and as you can see it's pretty straightforward you've got um, the lower section you've got the coil uh, trap and then you've got the upper section and the base is fed with um, 50 ohm coax cable uh, I've used once again the spider pole um, to uh, make this antenna the good thing about the spider pole of course is that the the coil you make will fit over the spider coil so in other words the spider coil is fed through the coil which makes it uh, a nice uh, sort of tidy arrangement and you can attach the uh, wire to the spider pole um, uh, whichever way you want I've got a, a little um, <coughs> uh, sort of screw in the top where I attach the wire to but you could you could tape it or whatever it doesn't really matter um, now the way to um, uh, get this antenna going um, is to first of all make the lower section make the lower section which is basically a five meter length of um, uh, antenna wire now five meters is approximate <laughs> you need to uh, do the final adjustment yourself with a, a, an SWR meter or an antenna analyzer um, so make it a bit longer than, uh, than uh, you um, you would expect it to be and then you can always uh, trim it back once you've got that lower section resonant on 20 meters then the next thing to do having my hundred coil which I show on the diagram there it's 25 turns on a former which is approximately two inches five centimeters diameter attach that coil to the uh, top of the uh, or the uh, 20 meter element and then put an extra bit of wire on it doesn't really matter how much it is perhaps a meter of wire just double check then that the antenna is still resonant on 20 meters and you'll also see another resonance which will be uh, lower than 20 meters it doesn't really matter at this point where it is but that is the important thing you've got two resonances you've got a resonance on 20 meters and then you've got another resonance at a lower frequency i found then I needed about two meters of wire um, above the uh, choke coil in order to get resonance on 40 meters. Now you may find that it's slightly different for, 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 for what um, is right for you and your installation, but that is the way to do it. Get the 20 meter section resonant first of all, add the coil and a bit of wire just to make sure that the 20 meter resonance is not really uh, affected much at all. You should see a lower resonance and then you need to adjust the wire I found two meters will give me resonance on 40 meters but it is a question of uh, suck it and see always make things a bit longer than you'd expect you can then trim them back and that's basically the antenna that um, will give you 20 meters and uh, 40 meters 
Well here we are out in the uh, sunshine and uh, behind me is uh, the antenna. I'm not really sure whether you can see it behind me, but anyway, behind me is the vertical antenna that uh, I uh, put together. Right, well I've gone in a bit closer now and you can see the coil on the uh, spider pole. Uh, nothing much else to show you really, but uh, that uh, shows you basically uh, what I've done. And uh, well, you can hear in the background there's an aircraft just decided to go over. I think it's going into Heathrow, but uh, there's not too many aircraft around uh, at the moment. One thing I um, should mention is that with any vertical antenna you do need radials. Uh, radials are almost a subject on their own and I may uh, visit that uh, some uh, later date but basically you need radials of some sort. My experience is that the quantity, quantity of the radials is more important than the length of them. And I've said before and I'll say it again don't worry about whether the radial is a quarter wave long because when you put a radial on the ground it's nowhere near resonant where you think it should be. If you can put a few radials down, say three or four radials, 10 or 12 foot long, that seems to work. It's not the best, because the best is more radials and longer radials. But put, put three, four radials down about 10 or 12 foot long and the antenna will work. If you want to improve it and you've got more room, put longer radials down, put more radials down but it'll get you started. 10, 12 foot radials, 16 foot radials. Sorry, I'm talking about feet. Mustn't talk about feet. Must talk in meters. Five meter radials, uh, three or four of them should, should do the trick. So there we are. So we'll just go back inside now and uh, finish off this video. It's a shame to go inside really because it's beautiful sunshine. It really is lovely. Blue sky, not a cloud in the sky. Anyway, enough of that we'll go back and finish the video indoors. Well it was very pleasant outside. I think I've mentioned maybe several times that the antenna was uh, on a spider pole. Um, what I will just show you on the screen is a, a shot of the um, antenna analyzer showing the two very distinct resonances and that's the sort of thing you're looking for. You should have two distinct resonances. So I'll put up on the screen now the uh, a shot of the antenna analyzer and you can see it's uh, it's very much resonant on 40 meters and 20 meters which was the uh, uh, the aim of the exercise in the first place and uh, as I said earlier on um, you know it's all, all very well modeling antennas but uh, uh, in my book you build them just to make sure that uh, they do actually work I'll put a link um, at the bottom of this video to our website um, showing you the spider pole. Basically um, it's 12 meters tall, 12 sections, very rugged, it's made of a thick uh, fiberglass material, um, you're not allowed to break it <laughs> and it's worth, it's worth getting a decent pole and uh, they're, they're lightweight so they're quite easy to, um, to uh, support and in its vertical form it's basically um, the sort of length that we're talking about. It is um, self-supporting. Of course, you don't need the whole lot telescoped anyway for this particular antenna. So there we are. Um, I hope that, uh, again, it's been informative. And if it has been, um, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, click the subscribe button. Always good to hear from you. And also great to hear the results that you're you're getting from it. Um, as I've said before, I can't respond to all the various comments because um, it's just me. <laughs> I have a daytime job as well. <laughs> um, uh, down uh, Portsmouth, uh, we're very much in operation. Uh, we've got a very slick team there. Um, I think it's been really refined. Um, I won't tell you the hours they're working, but they are getting up fairly early in the morning um, and all credit to them. Um, at the same time, they're working in a very safe environment. It's very well laid out. Um, there's ample space in between staff. If you're looking for um, gear, then um, please uh, uh, go onto the website, place the order. You can telephone. 
Um, some of the uh, staff will actually be operated from home, but that makes no difference because they've got the screens in front of them, they know what the warehouse has got, and as soon as they get your order, it goes straight onto the system into the warehouse. So it's just as if they were, if they were actually on site anyway. Um, we're finding a lot of interest in antennas, as you can imagine. Uh, this is sort of antenna weather. With, I think we're just getting through this cold spell now. Uh, we're selling lots of coax, lots of cable, masks, fittings, etc. And of course, the antennas themselves. Um, the good news is that the supplies are fairly good. Um, we're getting um, supplies from the States, uh, which is good. Had some Hustler antennas in, the Hustler verticals. Check those out. They're really good antennas. And in fact, I'm going to put one up myself in the next uh, few weeks. And as I do it, I'll, um, I'll video it. But anyway, um, they're, they're really good antennas and they're still great value for money. Um, if you're a VHF and UHF uh, enthusiast, then take a look at the dual range of antennas. Bit of a confusing name because they're not all dual band antennas, but uh, a number of them are. Um, and I've done a video on uh, the 9 element 2 meter um, antenna that um, Mike G3SED kind of put up in his, uh, in, I was going to say in his back garden. <laughs> it's more than a back garden. Anyway, Mike G3SED uh, did, a, did a video for us showing the assembly of one of these antennas and he was really impressed. So if you're a VHF or UHF enthusiast, take a look at the dual range of uh, Yagi antennas. Um, we're continually getting supplies from them. A little bit of time uh, uh, gap sometimes in supplies, but they are really nice antennas, so take a look. Anyway, that's enough of the commercial. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for your custom. And we will try and do our level best to get the goods out the same day. It is difficult at times and we are dependent on the carriers, but generally speaking, um, if we get the orders in a reasonable time during the day, they should go out the same day or the following day at the very latest. And as far as I know, um, from my own personal experience, parcel force, UPS, etc., are working very efficiently. So there we are. Thanks for watching this video. Enjoy your home radio. Don't forget. Keep safe. See you soon.